Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sequoia Commercial Lending. Uh, if this is the first time that you join our network uh, or our platform, Sequoia, it's actually a commercial lending platform. We are out here to what our our mission and our passion is to disrupt the commercial lending industry. Why do we do that? It's because for the longest time we realized that the people, the business owner that needs the funding and the people that actually has the funding do not connect. When they need money, a lot of these small business owners will just go to the bank. And quite frankly, bank is the most conservative institution out there. If the business model does not fit into their box, it does not fit into their guideline, or they don't like the financials, so on and so forth, they would just not fund anything to our business owners. So, however, there's a lot of money, private money, government money, institutional money out there that it's very abundant um, uh, 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 resources out there. But however, that's just doesn't have a platform that connect the two together. So that is why we built Sequoia Lending. Our goal is to connect business owner with the funding that they need. And we are going across the country right now. And I believe that we are in many, many different states right now. So if this is the first time that you're here, please connect us to our Facebook, connect us to our YouTube channel. Uh, every time when we have a have a training like this, we record it and we put onto our YouTube channel. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about a very very important project. Since last year, I have been telling everybody that hey, California is going to be big, green energy is going to be big. The government spending a lot of time. They have a lot of resources to help small businesses to go green. Last week, we were actually invited to the White House. The meeting is hosted by the Vice, uh, Office of Vice President, and they are out there talking about the importance of small businesses in the United States. And also, not only that they're talking about funding the small businesses, but they also want small businesses to be a part of all these movements for green energies. So a lot of the people that we think that, hey, when you come to talking about green energy, it's the big boys game. You're talking about Walmart. You're talking about uh, 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 Amazon. You're talking about all these big boys. No, it's not true. The government actually wants small businesses to be a participant in this a movement as well. And they have a lot of resources to help small businesses like that to convert themselves or has the intention to go green. So... Since last, last year, we have been talking about this, and it's, it's, it's such an honor that Sequoia is actually part of this movement and part of the advisor team on the uh, capital readiness program uh, from the MBDA uh, office. Uh, if you don't know what MBDA is, that is a minority business development agency. So again, our goal is out there to help small businesses, and especially for those businesses that are underserved. Uh, uh, under underserved, um, lack of resources, minority owned, so on and so forth. So last week, we had a gentleman, Scott, out here talked about SSBCI, uh, State Small Business Credit Initiative. That is a huge program that the federal government uh, funds, uh, uh, funded to 50 states. There are $10 billion out there. And this is a long-term program. It's not like a one-year, two-year program. This is a long-term program here to stay. And Sequoia has the resources and we have the connections to it. And today, we're going to talk about another program that it's, has a lot to do with SSBCI and also mainly importantly, most importantly, talk to, uh, has a lot to do with green energy. When we talk about green energy, what is green energy? And if you pay attention to it, there's a lot of... I bet all of us already know what solar solar power is all about. And many of us are start driving electrical vehicles. Uh, 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 now, there's a lot of EV product into the market, and especially in California, okay? Especially in California. Currently, right now, in California, there are approximately 150,000 EV stations. About, about 150,000 EV stations. I just came back from California two, two months ago. And one thing I noticed is that in California, there was a lot more EV vehicles on the road than any other states. Here, I'm in Maryland. I would say every, every 50 cars that I see, you will see one Tesla or one EV vehicle. But in California, 
every 10, you see two or three of them out there. So it's a huge, huge uh, 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 penetration of EV stations, uh, EV vehicle in California. But however, it is the lack of EV stations. And one thing that I hear from, from my friends that owns uh, 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 electrical cars in California is that, hey, it's very difficult for them to find a place to even charge, okay? So EV station is, is there right now. It's about 150,000 of them. But you know what? By the year 2040, the state, the goal for California is to get to 1.5 million EV stations. From 150,000 to 1.5 million, that's a huge jump. And that is why no wonder a lot of, energy company, installation company are, are going into California right now. So again, if you are in California or if you have clients in California, if you're in the energy space, you need to pay attention to what's going on, what's coming down. So yes, in all 50 states, there are so many different programs with, uh, uh, you know, uh, about, the, uh, about green energies. But today we are focusing on one program specifically in California. It's called Electrify California. Electrify California. Okay. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce this gentleman. I've been talking to him for a long time since last year, uh, day in and day out. We went. We we, we met each other in Sacramento last uh, last month, and he has a lot of passion about helping the communities. And he is our counterpart, and he's also part of the National AIDS or CPR or Capital Readiness Program, along with Scott, who you met last week, and along with us, and also National AIDS and so on and so forth. So he is currently the uh, program director for uh, a, uh, North Cal Asian Chamber of Commerce in California. So without further ado, welcome, Mr. Ricardo, onto the floor. Ricardo, the floor Thank is Thank you, yours. my friend. I appreciate that, Alan. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. Uh, so like Alan said, I'm the uh, program director for uh, the Capital Readiness Program for the California Asian Pacific Chamber of Commerce, uh, otherwise known as Electrify California. Uh, so I'm very excited to be able to present to you guys today. Uh, California is at the forefront for a lot of the advancement that we're seeing in the electrification sector, whether that be green energy, um, electric vehicles, uh, whether that be wind, solar power. Uh, and with those lofty goals and expectations, uh, they require a um, large amount of input from groups uh, such as us, uh, such as yourselves, uh, to be able to reach those goals. And for us, you know, they would like to be, they'd like to enter a zero carbon future by 2030, uh, a lofty goal in itself, but one that we clearly see, just like Alan said, uh, with the multitude of EV vehicles on the road, uh, he's very right. There are a lot of EV vehicles um, around. Uh, one happens to be in my garage at the moment. Uh, so it's it's something that has really caught on to, you know, our lifestyle here in California and one that continues to grow throughout the United States. Um, while we are called Electrify California, we do not limit our reach uh, to just our state. But it just so happens that our state is at the forefront for a lot of the changes that are being made. Uh, and I think it's something that for us as part of the MBDA, we want to make sure that we are giving uh, minority businesses, social economic disadvantaged enterprises, individuals uh, access to a ever growing marketplace, uh, to a sector that is now just establishing itself. Um, and it allows us to kind of get in at the ground floor. Uh, so, you know, we're very excited to be able to present Electrify California to you all and um, really to to everyone uh, to to be able to achieve these goals. Uh, I'm incredibly excited uh, to see where things continue to grow on our end and how we can assist people uh, to, you know, transition really away to from a, you know, a non EV uh, style of living towards one that, you know, now we are seeing the multitude of vehicles everywhere. We hope to see the multitude of chargers everywhere as well. Um, especially as, you know, people continue to make those treks from, you know, Southern California to Northern California. Um, I, I would love to stop somewhere and have the charger actually work. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of uh, a hunting to find a charging station that's accessible uh, and one that fits your vehicle. Uh, so those are the type of issues that we see that we would like to remedy uh, on our end. Um, and there, there are a multitude of ways that we're 
uh, attempting to make these changes, uh, whether that be in the procurement sector, uh, whether that's in the installation of uh, these charging stations, and whether it's also these businesses that are making the transition from um, your traditional business model to one where you are making an active effort to say, you know, we are going to go green, right? Uh, an example of this right now, we have a, a, a hotel owner who is looking to have solar placed uh, at his hotel and then install six, uh, six vehicle charging stations. Uh, and that allows us to assist with uh, access to capital for them so that they can make those changes. And that's what we're looking to do from here on out. Uh, is really allow people that access to say, you know what, uh, we have kind of been taking part in the older model of things where there hasn't been a big focal point uh, in the EV sector, um, in the green energy sector. We'd like to transition to that. Um, and they are using it for other things as well, such as, you know, for this hotel in particular, they're using it for their renovations. Uh, so uh, this allows them access to that capital under the scope of uh, an electrification focus. So we're we're excited to be able to assist in that, and again, giving people a seat at the table. You know, I I think being part of a minority group myself, that's always something that we think about. It's like, okay, how do we have access to these, you know, these these areas that haven't been diverse as diverse? Uh, how are we able to you know have that seat uh, and be able to contribute? This is how we do it through programs like Electrify California under the Capital Readiness Program. So we're we're very excited. Uh, to to be able to uh, initiate that. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to give you guys just a, a little bit of insight into who we are and what we do. Uh, so let me go ahead and just share my screen. I'm going to go ahead and present um, our slide that we have. Okay. So with who we are, we are Electrify California, uh, but our legal name uh, is the MBDA Capital Readiness Program. Uh, there are multitude of programs, but there's only one Electrify California. So we're very excited about that. Uh, so we are bringing, like I said before, um, these uh, social and economic disadvantage uh, individuals, enterprises, and businesses into the sector, um, many of which are taking part for the first time. And these aren't just businesses that already have a electrification focus. These are businesses who maybe they are taking their first step into this world. Um, for this program, we operate an incubator and accelerator series. Uh, we just wrapped up our first series um, last week. And it was a, I call it more of a, a, a guinea pig trial run. It was a seven week series, uh, shorter than our typical. Uh, and we're looking now to launch our second cohort uh, within the next month and a half or so, and that will be your traditional 12-week uh, series. So we're splitting groups up between uh, incubator, those who are maybe just starting uh, in this industry and looking for you know, a healthy transition into the world of electrification and green energy. Uh, and then we have our accelerator for those that are already established, uh, those who are already capital ready and ready to take that next step. Uh, and working with Alan, uh, we have really a, a third group as well for those who may not need uh, any accelerator, incubator, uh, I won't say hand-holding, but maybe a little bit more guidance uh, and are ready to take that next step capital-wise. Uh, so we are able to serve all businesses at any stage of their life cycle uh, and be able to put them in the best position to succeed. And that's what we want, right? We're, we're not going to, you know, sugarcoat anything or make somebody feel as if, you know, they have an opportunity for something where, you know, they may not be as ready uh, as they think. We we want to set the table correctly. We want to make sure that people know, hey, you may not be ready right now, but we can get you there. Or you are ready. Let's assist you in getting to that point. Uh, so we're, we are definitely that one-stop shop for everyone uh, who is at that point uh, in their business life cycle. So just a little background with the capital readiness program. Uh, so again, through uh, the California Asian Pacific Chamber of Commerce and MBDA, we're able to put uh, this program together. Uh, this is a four-year program, and we're looking for it to extend even more. When you are California-based with as many lofty goals as we have regarding our electrification efforts, this is something that we don't want to just be you know, a few years of this effort. No, we want this to be an established focal point of the industry, right? Our goal here 
is that this is where minority owned businesses, social economic disadvantaged businesses can enter this space somewhere where they are met with open arms to be able to grow, right? Enhance their business experience already. Um, and, you know, we're, we're very excited to, to be able to present that. Uh, and, you know, this allows us with these access to capital uh, and as well as um, being able to assist in uh, various points of the business life cycle, uh, whether they need the business planning uh, assistance or maybe a marketing assistance, uh, we're able to give that free of charge through this program. Uh, so that is the other part of this that I think is fantastic as well. Uh, through the MBDA as an MBDA client, uh, this this portion is completely free, right? For us, our payment comes in the way of success stories and being able to showcase the growth that businesses ha uh, make during their time with us. And, you know, you never really lose us. We're always here as a resource as well uh, at any point and really anything that you're looking to get out of the program. Uh, this is set as kind of that seven week business training cycle that we talked about earlier. Um, and It'll be expanded on as we look at more of a 12-week series. Uh, we are doing a weekly expert-driven hybrid sessions. So uh, for my fellow Californians in Northern California and Southern California, the Central Valley, uh, we do offer uh, hybrid class sessions. Um, and, and those will shift from areas of California week to week. Um, and, you know, that's something that if you are local, great to take advantage of. Uh, and I'd, I'd be more than happy to, to chat with you about that. Um, even for those that are outside of California, you know, those hybrid sessions, we we are available for those via Zoom um, every Wednesday uh, to take part in the, these sessions. Uh, so uh, this is definitely something that, you know, everybody can take part in, uh, and I would highly encourage everyone to do so. Um, all of our subject matter experts that we bring in for this are ingrained in the industry. And I think that's really what sets us apart from other programs. Um, we're not one size fits all. We don't do, you know, generic training sessions. Uh, these are businesses and leaders who are already established in the electrification industry and that you can utilize as resources because as our subject matter experts, they also have time on their calendar devoted to one-on-one -on -one time uh, that we pay for, right? Again, we're talking about what is included in all this. This is what's included uh, for, for our program is the ability to be able to uh, assist you at really any moment in your business life cycle. Um, we do the in-person training as well, um, but again, that can be flexed out for more of a hybrid model. Uh, so that's not a problem when we talk about the one-on-one -on -one training that is included with that. So uh, that in-person training session, we can adjust it as needed. Um, and then at the end of this, we offer matchmaking and networking events as well. Um, one of which that Alan did take part in uh, with one of our events uh, in California where he and I first met. Um, our, our undersecretary at the time for the MBDA was there uh, and he was able to meet with him. Those are the type of events that we do regularly um, and, and typically after the cohort session. Um, we do a pitch event that's uh, attached to each cohort. Uh, and typically there's a, well, I won't just say typical, I'll say always, uh, there's a, a prize of some sort, whether that is a, a contract uh, with a prime uh, or a um, stipend of some sort as well. Uh, so uh, we want to make sure that it's rewarding for everybody that participates in this. Uh, so the six weeks, I just want to give you a, a brief look at what things look like. Um, and I, I find it so funny that Scott was here previously uh, because Scott Rogowski is a partner of ours uh, who actually handles much of the financing for Electrify California um, with, of course, the consulting of Alan as well. So, uh, you know, the, the three of us really are three major pillars for uh, Electrify California. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy that you guys were able to meet with Scott because he does handle a majority of our, our financing through the SSBCI loans uh, and you know, access to capital. Uh, so, you know, for us, he was our very first uh, subject matter expert, very fittingly, because he tru truthfully knows the industry almost better than anybody else from a finance side of things. Um, we would not have brought him on board had he not been. Uh, and he's been amazing to work with. So I, I definitely look forward to to you guys working with him as well. Uh, so I, I find it great that, you know, I'm following up his meeting with my own. Um, 
we the developing a competitive business plan portion of it this is really more of a, a box checking portion and while we did have a subject matter expert for it and we still do uh, this is almost as needed um, it's very easy to just establish a one week business planning session but when you realize that it probably takes you more than one week to establish a a, a solid strategic plan this is where that one on one time is available uh, so we will be continuing this in the 12 week session. Uh, it just, it's in a very case by case. We're going to have companies and businesses who are, they may not need it, but then we're going to have others who, you know, we need to take a deeper dive into what maybe has not worked before um, and, and allow them to be prepared for the changes that need to be made. Uh, you know, we want to put people in the best position to succeed. Um, preparing EV for procurement. The procurement space in California is booming. It's one that has been growing more and more in EV over the last, I will say five years. Uh, and they don't see a shortage of it. They they see it as an industry and an area of the industry that has continuously grown to the point where we are seeing more of these opportunities than there are available businesses to take part and really take advantage of them. And we want this to be a natural pipeline for those opportunities. And that's where that matchmaking at the end of the series comes from, right? We're matchmaking you with uh, procurement opportunities that are ready made and ready to go. And I think that quickly ties into using our AI for business model. Uh, we do operate a procurement site, much like um, your typical like Dell Tech, um, and it utilizes an AI component. Uh, and that puts us kind of, like I said before, at, at the forefront to a lot of changes that are being made, right? We're, we're able to streamline uh, opportunities at a greater level uh, because of this AI component that we've now introduced. And it, it's one of those things, again, that sets us apart. And that's you'll find that to be the common theme here, right? Uh, we don't want this to be repetitive in any way. In any way. We want this to be continuously streamlined so that we're able to match make businesses to the point that it's tailor made for them. Uh, and then the sales strategies in an EV world, uh, this is a area that I think isn't as uh, isn't as focused in on at the moment. And we were very excited uh, when we were able to bring in subject matter experts who can look at this from a, a much more wide lens as to what makes the EV sector so different and as to what makes it uh, really this one of a kind area that hasn't been tapped into as much right it's new new is typically scary uh but with us we also see it as a challenge worth going after and it takes like-minded businesses and individuals much like yourselves uh to really tackle it head on and and that's what that focus was for us uh and we typically cap off every uh every cohort with a state of ev and you know we've had government officials take part we've had uh, business owners who are well established in the industry uh, lead our cohort for that session, and you know we're going to continue to do that uh, as each cohort advances. So you know, like I said, we we want we want to not be repetitive in the work that we do, uh, but at the same time bring in industry experts who can really contribute to the growth of our businesses, to the growth of the individuals who are taking part in Electrify California. So this is what we have been working on this is what how things have kind of gone over the course of the last i would say few months leading into now um our pitch event uh for uh late february um we're still moving forward with that uh that will be followed by a networking event uh both of which we're incredibly excited for uh we have a, a group of 10 businesses who have submitted their their respective pitches and their um really their their plans for their development uh, to us. They will present again to a panel of judges uh, with the um, with the, the winner uh, bringing in a, a sum of money uh, to put towards those plans that they have. And we're very excited. We, we've seen the entry, the the registrants for this. Uh, I think this is one thing that really sets us apart. And it's the accelerator portion that are leading into this. Um, and this is a cohort that we had prior to this called Electrify Sacramento, uh, so a regional variant. And you know, many of them are are entering into this program now, and they're coming in with ideas that you know we 
had no idea they were even thinking about. And it's exciting to be on that end because we're going to have prime and subcontractors in the room there with them who are going to be ready to either fund, to either take part in, um, or, you know, potentially subcontract for these ideas uh, to take shape. So we're very excited about that. Uh, and in the spring of, uh, of this year, uh, we are going to have our accelerator portion for cohort number two. Um, those that took part in the original cohort will be graduating uh, into the accelerator. Um, and these are businesses that, again, we feel are ready to make that leap. And, you know, we're, we're excited to take that leap with them. You know, it, it really develops almost like a, a family atmosphere. You know, and if you think about it, like when, when you were in school, you know, the first day of school, like, you know, nobody really knew each other. It was very awkward. And over time you built that camaraderie within your classroom, right? Suddenly everybody knows everybody like you belong to this class. So, you know, you take pride in that. That's how we feel with Electrify California. You know, we feel that the group of businesses and individuals who have taken part in our cohort, they develop a sense of pride in, in representing Electrify California. And for us, we want to make sure that we do right by them. Uh, and, you know, we're we're excited to to assist them uh, as their business develops. And where to find us, we're updating uh, our email here. So I, what I will go ahead and do is I'll send it to Alan. Uh, that way he can distribute. Uh, and uh, he'll be able to to lead the charge there. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do as well is I'm going to send a, a full copy um, of not just the deck, but an updated flyer now that we're going into uh, cohort number two. Uh, and that will have the information as we have it updated. Uh, so I will make sure that he has that for you guys as well. Uh, so, you know, this is this is kind of a part of our evolution as Electrify California where we wanted this to be built on adaptation. We wanted this to be built on an idea of fluidity where we are making sure that the people taking part in the cohort have a say in the direction that this cohort takes, right? If there's a greater interest in us going into more of the um, supplier diversity and you know procurement sector, we want to you know hone in on that. And right now, as we enter the planning phase of cohort number two, which is only, you know, a little over a month and a half away, uh, we're excited about the changes based off of the information we've gathered from cohort one. Uh, so if there were ever any a point for you guys to come on board and take advantage, it's absolutely now. Uh, and what I will say is while there's a large focus on EV, if you are looking to transition a business, transition a commercial space towards more of a green energy focus, we are ready to assist with that. We are ready to check the boxes that you need in order to get the funding that you need uh, so that we can assist you in the development of your uh, business plan and model for that. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that there's plenty of room to be able to assist in really any green energy, EV, solar, wind, uh, what have you to contribute to your business. And we at the Capital Readiness Program, it's in our name. We're ready to assist you with the access to capital for that. So uh, I appreciate you guys uh, watching that slide deck with me. Uh, I will make sure that you have a copy of that. Uh, and I'm absolutely uh, ready to assist you guys uh, with anything that you need within this space. Uh, and uh, Daniel, I see your message there. I will make sure that you guys get that information. I know uh, I'm going to present everything over to Alan. That way, he can send it out in a more comprehensive email for me. Could you could you just put that up here? Just you had it up on the slide before, and you took it down just so we could grab that because some people may not be able to find the other source. Oh, um, the the email that we have on here needs to be updated. We're updating that email. I'm I'm going to send one shortly after this meeting directly to Alan. That way, he has it. Okay, is that phone number that was on there the seven eight eight three number? Is that correct? Yes, that one is correct. So. Uh, that one is fine. I'll put it in the chat right now. Great. There we have that. Does I um sorry, I don't want to jump in if you're still presenting. No, no, absolutely jump in. Um, so does uh, Electrify California actually provide the capital to launch companies or what is it? I, it's I, I guess I missed part of that. So can you clarify so, what, what resources are provided in the way of like either like you know, um 
you know, business startup funding or uh, it, it, help me understand a little bit more. I just, it wasn't quite clear. Yeah, to me. Ab absolutely. Uh, so for us, we, I'm not sure if you were um, available for last week. Was it last week, Alan, with Scott yes, being here? That is what no. the uh, SSBCI is about. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the SSBCI funding is what we utilize for this program. Uh, so that is uh, our major method of uh, accessing funding capital uh, for our partners. Uh, what I will say, though, as well, is with our wealth of financial financial institutions that we work with already, uh, we are able to present a diversified portfolio of financiers to be able to access capital that you need. Um, at the moment, we're not tied to a specific grant, but it is something that we are now looking to incorporate. Um, with any grant cycle, things will be, they fluctuate with the political landscape of things, especially in the state of California. Uh, and while they're working to push new funding availability via grants, um, the SSBCI side of things is what we strategically focus on because it's readily available, uh, especially as uh, these businesses look to uh, enter the electrification sector. They go hand in hand. So it, sorry, you were about to say something? I was gonna say, what what can you give? I, I did miss the, the presentation last week and I'll watch that tonight, but could you just cover broadly, like what's the range of funding the SSBCI provides? Is it like, but then like, you know, is it, is it, uh, you know, $10,000 loans? Is this, are we talking like a million dollars, 10 million, 20, a hundred? Like that, that ranges from $5,000 to $10 million. 5,000, 10 million. Okay. Right. So now obviously everybody wants $10 million, wants $10 million, right? But can they actually get $10 million? That is a totally different story. So that has a lot to do with the company's experience how many years they have been in, in operation. Now, if you're talking about a brand new company that have never been in business before and you're not going to get $10 million. If you're lucky, you get ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And as, as I mentioned last week that I saying that, hey, for a startup company, personally, I do not believe a, per, a startup company should go out there to look for a loan. They're supposed to go out there to look for uh, 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 investors. It's because without a proven uh, a proven a business model that you can actually generate income, getting a loan is actually a very, very, um, uh, it's, it, it has a lot of pressure on the business uh, owners because now you have to knowing how to pay back every single month. The funding, the loan is actually to help you to grow your business. Okay. So the startup fund, many of this startup fund, it's uh, from angel investors, so on and so forth, that will actually help you to start the business. But however, with that being said, Equipment loan is totally different. So let's say you are just start up a, a new a new business that you need money to purchase equipment. Now we can fund equipment all day long, such as EV stations. So now we have lender through SSPCI. Yes, I mean SSPCI they can fund all kind of stuff. They can fund you as working capital. They can give you money for for equipment loan, so on and so forth. But they are very limited. Okay, uh, especially you are a brand new company. They are not going to give you. A hundred, two hundred thousand dollars for you to just test out your idea. But however, with the the private sector, we have lenders that is willing to give you money as long as you use the money to purchase equipment, and we can fund you if you're brand new business, no experience or whatsoever. We can fund you up to fifty thousand dollars, sometimes more if you can show you know other uh, 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 liquidity or whatsoever. But we can fund you up to fifty thousand dollars without any experience whatsoever. But however, if you have the experience, you can get up to ten million dollars uh, for you know for this type of project. So, just talk about EV stations. We have lender besides of SSBCI, we have lender that can fund up to one hundred percent of the equipment cost. That is huge. Listen carefully. One hundred percent of the equipment cost plus up to 50% of the installation cost. Okay, so again, that is a very, very huge uh, uh, um, fundings out there. So again, funding sources out there. And with Sequoia, we have the, we have the platform, we have the uh, partners that can find the funding sources for our business uh, our people. So what we are trying to do right here is to let everybody know is that, hey, if you have a business like this that you need funding, Here's the resources. But the most important thing is not about just you. It's about the whole community. We need everybody to go out there to let the community know that, hey, the funding's here. The government's willing to help. A lot of investors are already in lines to ready to fund this type of projects. Go out there to let them know that, hey, we are here to help. Um, well, and I think that ties into the other part of that too, Alan. And 
and I appreciate you jumping in there because I think that's something that we wanted to be very forthright about too, uh, with the opportunities that we have available. Uh, if if you're a, a new business that's looking to establish themselves into the electrification sector, right? In order to be more lend worthy for these loans, right? They want to see an established amount of time that that you have already contributed to not just the sector itself, but as an established business. That's where we come in as Electrify Sacramento, right? Being, while well, yes, our cohorts are available to you, and I would recommend being a part of them uh, because you do have access to uh, that growth and really to be able to um, establish yourself in an industry over the course of that time where maybe you're, like I said, it's an incubator, you're incubating, your business is incubating and getting itself ready to uh, be capital ready, right? That's where we can come in and already establish those strategic partnerships to where when you are ready, um, and I, I I believe that Scott most likely touched on this last week as well um, in his in his presentation. Uh, typically, you know, with two years plus uh, of you know of of activity, uh, that is typically the amount of time that a bank is looking for, a, a lending source is looking for uh, to give you access to that capital, and that time can be spent with us where you're meeting with, uh, you know, our subject matter experts, where you're meeting with um, our, or partaking in our one-on-one -on -one time um, with a lot of these lenders ahead of time, right? Because they are people that are a part of our program uh, and they provide those resources free of cost to you. Uh, so those are tools that really all align up on both sides of this, uh, especially with, uh, you know, Alan and myself, uh, it basically allows you to be fully prepped from both sides of the same coin. So, hey, then, Ricardo, who, yes. who, who are who are our clients? Who do we who do we target? Uh, so for us, for for us, our targets are socioeconomically disadvantaged businesses and enterprises. Um, really, MBEs and DBEs are who we target, um, and. Mean? So um, for MBEs, it's, uh, and I will, I'm sorry, I should have presented this ahead of time. Uh, so uh, for us, our uh, minority business enterprises are MBEs. Uh, and, and that would be really any, any person of color um, that, that would fall under MBE. The DBE uh, is going to be for uh, disadvantaged uh, enterprises. And, and what I will say with that too, that also includes rural areas. Right. If you are taking part in an area that is underserved um, or an area that has experienced hardship for fairly recently, um, this also falls under for veteran owned businesses, women owned businesses. Uh, it's a very broad list. And what we love about that is, again, we talk about that seat at the table. This opens up that table for really everyone. Uh, so those are who our targets are. Right. Those are who our clients are. Uh, you know, it's what we've noticed is with every emerging market over the last 50 years. It's very difficult for minority and disadvantaged businesses to have a seat. And I wouldn't even say even having a seat, I would say just getting in the room. Right. Like you're it's like even getting to that point has been incredibly difficult. Uh, but now through the MBDA, who we are a permanent established group now we are presenting these opportunities for everyone to have a seat like we're not talking just let us in the room no we want to see at the table right mm -hmm. we're knocking on the table now that's where we're at so those those are the people that we're targeting yeah um we Carl, can, go ahead we can go ahead, any state any state right uh so yes and and i think working through alan is the best way to um really to to get through the the this process uh so alan and i work together hand in hand uh and we we have it opened up to to really any state i know it says california yeah. in our name uh, uh, we don't discriminate yeah. we work with everybody all right thank you yeah all right alan yes ma'am i'd like to talk to you because i do have a small business it's minorities in recycling and environmental management Okay. And we've been in business for the last 
20 years. We've been yep. basically kind of focusing on education, yep. but we need to partnership with someone for, um, yeah, for, for, the, for solar and energy. And, you know, we've also been working with your geo for the electrical yep. uh, EV stations. So is that something that you and I can talk about? Absolutely. I love to do that. And as you mentioned that, um, I just want to leak out a little bit to you guys that Sequoia is actually going into the in energy space as well. As we speak right now, we are talking with a few nation national in, uh, um, EV installers and solar installers so that we can represent those companies as well. So this is what we run into uh, throughout the process that we have a lot of installers, distributors, that they sell EV stations, they install EV stations, they install solar panels, came to us. Look, with one reason and one reason only, their client needs funding so that they can install the projects for their clients. So now we are actually talking to a few companies out there so that we can partnering up our agent, like yourself, that we are not only just providing the funding, a solution for these business people, but we are also be able to distribute or sell these EV stations as a package to all these business people out there. So again, that is coming down. And I believe Tom is in the in the in the call right here. Tom is a great. Uh, uh, he has been. He and I actually been in the solar industry. A lot of you don't know my. Uh, my, my my other life, right? I've actually been in the solar industry for a long time and I used to be the master distributor for a company called Sun Edison. Okay. I mean, obviously Sun Edison gone and, uh, and uh, but that that's where I am. But however, uh, Tom and I, we have been in the uh, energy space for a long time. And also, I'm not sure if Joseph is in the, in the, in the call also. Joseph also owns a solar installation company in California. So we are actually talking with national installers that they can install EV stations all across the country. And we're also talking suppliers that can bring in EV stations. So again, every single one of us, not only that we can provide the fundings for our clients, but we can provide a solution package for all these business people. And now the good thing is once they have that package, now guess what? We send it to Ricardo. We send it to Scott. And now they are able to help us to review the package and let us know how do we, how can we get the funding for our clients. So again, you're not just working with one person here. You're working with a team of people that, that uh, you know, that, that this is just a small revolution. This is just the beginning of a huge, huge movement that we are going to about to see for the next, not next year, for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. And we are here not just disrupt the commercial lending industry. We are be participating to disrupt the energy industry as well. So this is very, very exciting for all of us. If you don't see, if you cannot see the magnitude that what we are trying to do. Okay. So I see Joseph. Hi, uh, Joseph. How are you doing? Hey, hello. You hello, doing? man. I got a little late. You know, we've been, we're busy, really yeah. busy. Now, jo I, Joseph, I jo big... Joseph, yes, is, Joseph is our, our, um, uh, uh, um, uh, Sequoia member in, Southern California, and he owns a, a, a solar installation company. And again, we are partnering up with him already that we, you know, that we're going to do a lot of big things. So mm -hmm. a lot of things is going on, guys, with Sequoia. So just like Ricardo said, now is the time for you to get involved. If you're still thinking about, should I get involved? Should I watch? You watch all day long. Okay. But what we want you to do is that we want you to become a participant in this game. Can I share something with the team, Alan? Yes, Joe. It's your so, you know, I, I, I've been in this space for 11 months. I am I know everything there is. <laughs> Not yet, but, you know, I, I mean, you know, those people that you know that have acres of land in their family, they've been in the family for years, but there's nothing to do with that property. They're paying taxes. They're not, you're frustrated because they really can't use it for anything. If that property has, you know, when you're driving in a rural community and you see that one telephone pole with one line, if that property has that one line on it, that's gold because every utility company out there will buy solar energy and all you need is the sun 
And once it's built, they're giving 10, 20, 30 year contracts. And you guys know, like I do, the energy company's check is not going to bounce. So, you know, that we're, you know, meeting, you know, we're a national company and we've been meeting with a number of farmers and homeowners that own property that's been will property, you know, so, you know, just to speak numbers and I won't hog the meeting, but half a million to a million dollars, you're looking at, an, you know, a 40% tax credit that you get back because, you know, there's no new energy and our existing energy grid, no way they handle 2 million cars pulling 100 amps. No way. So anyone who does this with the solar package one day, a year, two, not three, there's going to be a line of cars out there every day, all day long. And if you do a solar farm, you're going to get 1200 to 2400 depending on what the energy company pays every day for 30 years. And that's generational money. And I'll kind of let you go from there. Absolutely. Hey, thank you so much, yeah. Joe. So again, what we're asking everyone to do is that, hey, now you know what we are able to do, what we can do. Go out there, talk to your friends, talk to your clients, talk to your people that you, you might know in California, not just in California, it's all over the United States and let them know, hey, you know, things like this is, is coming down. Now, you do not need to become the expert of what Joe and Tom is about to do. You do not need to become an engineer to try to figure out how to install. No, no, no. That's not what you want to do. What I want you to do is to bring the clients onto our platform. And now you have Joe and other installation company engineers to go out there to do the site surveys to understand what the site looks like and how many EV stations to install, things like this. And once they come up with a proposal, we bring the proposal back to Ricardo and Scott and let them know that, hey, this is the funding that we need. Go to SSBCI, go to the government, go to whatever that might be to get the funding. And that is what this thing is all about. So through the Sequoia platform, and hopefully you can see we are growing and growing, and growing. we're providing more and more services and products onto our platform and all these things is not like a ding dong some change stuff okay we're talking about huge projects right here and i also see uram on the on the, on the line uram is another solar he owns a solar company that produce solar technology he has all he's he's he has this solar i don't even know what it is that actually goes checks around the suns that 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 the solar panel can actually brings in more and more uh, uh, can produce a lot more electricity. So I believe that uh, uh, Yoram and Joe yeah. and is actually working together right now and for yeah. a few projects. And very yeah, soon, we, you... Yeah. yeah, so the tracker guys... So, the tracker, yes. You know, you know, Yoram, it's, we, and, and there's a couple more products. One of the things that, you know, I got a guy on my team, he's MacGyver. <laughs> he saw this five years ago. His name is Tim the Power Guy. And, you know, we've partnered and... One of the things that he does, he he just has found us, you know, like, for example, we have a Toledo panel, and that Toledo panel is 100% American-made, 100% recyclable, no landfill, and it produces, you know, you're able to get a 40% tax credit, and then the tracker, because it's run by hydraulics and not gears, there's a 99.6% uptime performance warranty of 20 years, and it produces 60% more energy than anything out there. So when you're looking at a solar farm or an EV hub, just the amount of energy that you can pr produce, you know, because the idea you want to make your client become their own energy company. That's the goal where they're not dependent or paying the energy company any of their funds. And if they're totally independent of the energy company, now they're getting 100% profits, ROI, three and a half, two and a half to three years, you know, which is unheard of. And, you know, now is just the time because the technology is really advanced. Okay. Great, wonderful. So again, uh, there are a few questions in the chat box. So let's see. Um, a lot, a lot of you asking for EV EV stations qualifications, so on and so forth. That is a not a one or two sentence that can we can answer, right? So again, uh, the goal for us is to I well not right now. Once we promote this program, that you know that um, 
that we are going to announce a lot of the the, the product sort of specification and things like this. But what you are looking for right now is that hey, if you have clients that already talking to an EV stations and try to install EV stations onto their property and they need funding, we can do it. Now, this is the question I have for you, Ricardo, that we have been actually talking about this, right? So what if businesses that does not own their property, they cannot install EV stations, they cannot install uh, 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 solar panels, what can they do to turn their business into a green energy business? And we talked about that. So so, so share with us on the, uh, uh, with the team. So we have worked directly with uh, counties and cities in order to make a... Um to really create a plan that is beneficial for both parties. Uh, so the the person who is fronting the cost of the uh, solar or the EV station uh, underfunding, uh, that would be their unit uh, that would then be rented out via the county or city uh, for use. Um, and that's case by case, but that's what we've done here in California. Um, and that is something that we would have to take a look at the business plan model uh, in order to make sure that it's a fit. Uh, but it is something that we have assisted with uh, with our clients that we currently have. Um, when I talked about the the hotel uh, that we're working with, uh, they also own and operate a uh, the building that a hospital resides in. Uh, the hospital is fronting the cost for the installation, uh, but uh, the uh, county itself is uh, utilizing and maintaining the uh, the rights to the service. So the electrification of the charger uh, and their uh, canopy for their solar hub. Right. So, hey, guys, just remember one thing, okay? Remember, I, I know things like this will get very, very excited, especially for new things. But I want to hold your horses. Don't lose track of what you're supposed to do. You are not, you're here not to become an expert in solar not to become an expert on ev stations not an expert in commercial lendings all you do is to plug into this platform utilize your resources bring your resources onto the platform and let the expert in the platforms to answer all these questions for you so i see a lot of you asking what is the spec for ev stations so on and so forth bring them online once they bring them online joe is going to answer them Daniel is going to answer them. Tom is going to answer them. Yoram is going to answer them. These people are expert right here. Okay. So your job is to know what we have on, on this platform. What can you do to utilize this platform, utilize all these resources that you have right now? And I bet you 99.99999% of the people out there have no idea what we just talked about. We are the first group of people. I repeat, we are the first group of people that Ricardo is talked to besides of his office. We are the first group of people that Scott is talking to besides of his client. So we are the first group. What are you going to do with this information is the most important thing. I don't want you to become a subject expert, a matter expert. There's so many experts out there already. What I need you to do is to help us to disrupt this industry. Go out there, go to your community, let your people know that money is there and I have access to that funding. I have access to that information. I have access to that resources that I can help you to prepare yourself to get the funding that you need if you are, if you are a startup company. I need you guys to do that. And I guarantee you, and I guarantee you, with us, if stuck with us, I guarantee you, your life will be different. I did want to touch on the uh, one of the messages in the chat regarding uh, Michigan uh, when it comes to EV. Uh, I will say that based off of what we know and based off of the ever-growing sector that is uh, EV uh, and really green energy, uh, there, are, there are four major state players at the moment uh, that are either already established are seeing dramatic growth or have now taken ev seriously to the point that it is being reestablished in their business model um michigan is absolutely on that list uh because the ford motor company now has a greater foothold uh in the ev industry um, i will also say that tennessee texas and california 
uh, are the other pillars there. Uh, and this is not something that will just stop with those states. It is something that will expand and grow nationwide because this is the new normal. The 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 this sector is one that is quickly establishing itself as a major player. And Alan is very right, right? This isn't for you to be a, a subject matter expert in the field, uh, but it is an opportunity for you to to meet a challenge head on uh, and really take advantage of disrupting in this industry. And this is an industry that wants to be disrupted. This is an industry that is kind of an island of misfit toys in a way. And they want to be able to diversify and establish themselves in areas of growth that frankly have been lacking uh, for the greater part of you know the last few decades. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Ricardo. Thank you so much for coming on board. And uh, I, I know that we're going to meet again very, very soon. And we do have a plan to go back to Sacramento very soon. Um, again, thank you for joining with us with us in another uh, wonderful uh, Wednesday night at another episode. So where do we go from here? I don't know about you. I'm going to go out there to disrupt. <laughs> and I bet you would do the same. So without further ado, um, this training is going to be online by no later than by tomorrow. So if you're not connected to us, please connect to us on our Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, so on and so forth. And ask the person who invites you here, or I'm sure that you got connected to us through some sort of uh, channel. So let us know if you need to connect to us. We would love to connect with you. But the most important thing is that I believe in one thing, that everything happened for a purpose. The reason that you are here tonight is not just accident, that you are just showed up on a Zoom, that he listened to someone that talked about Lecture by California. That is a reason for you to be in this room tonight and utilize that you, you deep, in, deep inside of your heart, you know why you're here. Go out there to do the amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, participating. Thank you so much again, Ricardo. And uh, we will definitely bring you back online uh, very, very soon. So with thank that being said, me. good night, everyone. Have a good weekend. Oh, for the Chinese, happy new year. <laughs> happy, happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Bye.